Music seems to be the most immediate of all the arts. Music possesses us. It really is as if some other has entered not just our bodies, but our intentions as well, taking us over. Does this music cause you to do what you do? Tonight's News on the News special report will be examining the controversial question, can the music we listen to affect our lifestyles and beliefs? Would you be willing to tell us who your favorite bands are? Nirvana, Jesus and Mary Chain, Thrill Cult, Cult, Sonic Youth, Jesus Lizard. Robert Smith is God. Smashing Pumpkins. Do you think these songs have in any way affected your values or the way you live your life? It's just music, man. We just listen to the music, that's all. Would you mind telling our viewers what bands you like to listen to? Fox, Ray, Snoop Dogg, 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 Do you think this music or these bands have in any way influenced your lifestyles or beliefs? Yeah, no. Uh, no, man. All I like is a music, man. That's all. That's all. Hey, who are you guys listening to? Yeah, Do you think this music has impacted you in any way, shape, or form? Hey, hey guys, can you tell us what bands you like to listen to? What's up, one? Slayer! Dio! Ozzy! Travis! Do you think this music has affected you in any way? What? Do you think that listening to these bands has in any way influenced your lifestyles or beliefs? No, man. We just like the music, that's all. Well, I like to listen to Chaos One, Domino Cooley. It's Warren G. Do you think the songs that you listen to have affected your attitude or character? No, we just we just like the music. That's all. Hey, who it? Hey, girl, it's me. Get right here. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Never mind. Well, there you have it, folks. Straight from the fans themselves. Apparently the music they listen to has absolutely no impact on their lifestyles, beliefs, or anything else for that matter. With Channel 9's News on the News, I'm Alex McNamara. Whether it's the way some people dress, act, or speak, we can all smile at such extreme examples of music's influence over its audience. And the degree to which those same fans will deny that influence. While most of us do know someone who could have been featured in our Nose on the News satire, the truth is that for most of us, music seems to be just that, music, an amusement, a harmless form of entertainment that we can both turn on and off at will. Funny thing about life, though, it has a way of busting through the facade of our excuses and easy answers and forcing us, if we're brave and honest enough, to do a serious gut check. Could there be more to all of this than meets the eye and ear? I'm standing in front of Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado, scene of one of the worst mass murders in American history. On April 20th of 1999, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold strolled into this school shortly before lunch and opened fire. After killing 12 classmates and a teacher, and planning at least 30 bombs with the intent of killing hundreds more, they turned their guns on themselves. A stunned nation was once again forced to gaze into the abyss of evil and ask, why? How can two so young do something so unspeakably depraved? What force or circumstance can turn former Boy Scouts, living in two-parent homes in an affluent suburb, young men blessed with health, intelligence, and good looks, into two assassins who laughed as they hunted down their victims, killing them in cold blood? As America and much of the world grappled with this question, 
parallels began to be noted to other recent acts of senseless destruction and mayhem. Horrors again committed by individuals who not so long ago would have been considered too young to have had the time to develop the depravity of conscience necessary to perform such evil. Pearl, Paducah, Jonesboro, Springfield, Santee, kids gunned down at the supposed sanctuary of their schools. And then there's Rod Farrell the leader of a vampire cult who, for no more than the rush he thought he would get from taking someone's life, bludgeoned a member's parents to death with a crowbar. Richard Ramirez, the infamous Night Stalker, killed and then carved pentagrams into the flesh of his victims. Fourteen-year-old Tommy Sullivan stabbed his mother to death, cutting off her hand and face before turning the knife on himself. In a secluded wood, three pre-adolescent boys were stabbed to death and mutilated. Convicted for the crime were three teenagers with more than a passing interest in the occult and heavy metal music. Four teenagers calling themselves the Lords of Chaos began a spree that spiraled down into ever-increasing acts of mayhem and violence. From theft to vandalism to arson. Their rampage ended with their arrest for the brutal and senseless murder of their high school music teacher. Three young men, ages 15, 16, and 17, believing that a human sacrifice would invoke hell's blessings and assure the success of their heavy metal band, lured 15-year-old Elise Poller into the woods and stabbed her to death. From suicide to homicide, rape to killing one's parents. The list goes on and on. The bottom line for each of these young killers, of course, is that they chose. They made a conscious decision to pick up a knife or a gun or a bomb and kill. No failure in their upbringing, no cultural deficiency, no weapon, movie, song, or video game, no demon evoked through some occult ritual can serve as a primary focus of blame. They are killers because they killed. But that said, we would still do well to consider those cultural phenomena that may have helped move them along towards that point of decision. The most common denominator in the lives of these young killers was a profound sense of being outcasts, of not fitting into the prevailing cliques, of being shunned and made fun of. But can that by itself explain these horrors? After all, there's nothing new here. When haven't there been cliques and kids made to feel that they're outside them? No doubt a good portion of the blame lies with our society at large, our national addiction to ever-increasing doses of violence, gore and mayhem, reaching down into even the toys that are marketed to our children. The general coarsening of our culture, shattering taboos concerning everything from language to sex. The sacrifice of moral absolutes upon the altar of relativism. The lack of true heroes and strong moral leadership. This and more has contributed to the steady erosion of the foundation of honor, civility, and self-sacrifice that is necessary to bring out the best in a nation's citizens while keeping the worst at bay. Leaving the bigger picture and focusing in on some of the specific cultural phenomena that seem to thread their way through most of these acts of teen violence. The occult, whether through dabbling or outright obsession, was uncomfortably common. 3D shooter games like Quake and a fascination with violent movies were another prevalent theme. But perhaps the most widespread link to the world of pop culture was the music that so often seemed to score, like a Hollywood movie, their individual descents into anarchy and senseless violence. From Marilyn Manson to Ramstein. Gangster rap to grunge. Metallica. Their fans are so hardcore. It's like almost like a religion. To KMFDM.